Setting up the lights correctly is the most important thing in creating professional visualizations. If your lighting is done poorly, then your materials will not look realistic and your render will be flat. Today I will create natural and artificial light properly. This is my interior scene, which I will use during this tutorial. Let's create the lighting. To do this, we need to turn on V-Ray Light tab. Just right-click somewhere here at the top and check V-Ray Light tab. Remember to check other V-Ray toolbars. Then the most important icon is visible, Asset Editor. Let's click on it and let's see that in the Light tab, one position has appeared. This is sunlight. This light is set by default. Mostly, I use different type of light to create the lighting in the scene. So firstly, I will turn off sunlight. Just click on this sunlight icon and let's see that it grayed out. Now I will create dome light. In V-Ray 6, we have great features in dome light, which we will use during this tutorial. Let's take a look. I click on the dome light icon over here and place it anywhere in the scene. It can be in this place. Let's see that the new position has appeared. I click on the DOM light and on the right side I have properties. Firstly, I need to upload a map. It will be HDRI map. You can download many free HDRI maps with a great quality from the website polyheaven.com. I downloaded HDRI maps from this website and I place them in the folder. I click on the texture slot, click on the folder icon, and I choose Clarence Midday 4K map. I go to the previous asset and let's see that everything looks correctly. I will go outside to show you a great new feature. I rotate the view and this is my building. Let's go to the asset editor and render interactively. This is the view outside the window. Let's see that there is no dome light in the scene. This is because my section plane is turned on. Here is my section plane. All I have to do is uncheck these options, display section planes, display section cuts, and display section fills. Let's see that now it works correctly. But let's see that the appearance of the dome light is set automatically. We can change it. Just go to the dome light properties, and here we have option Finite DOM. Let's check it. We can notice that a very small DOM light has appeared. If I increase the radius, we can notice our finite DOM light with the grant. Let's see that I can increase the radius. My finite DOM light is too dark, that's why I will change intensity, for example to 30, and it looks much brighter. I will come a little closer and the view is different. Let's see that except for radius, we have also projection height and ground blend. Firstly, I will focus on the ground blend. I will decrease the radius value and let's see that if I change this ground blend value, I increase it to 1, I obtained the sphere. If I set it to 0, the shape of the finite dome is different. I always set it to 0 0.2. Here, we can change the projection height. I will increase the value of the radius, okay? And let's change the height. If I increase this value, let's see that the height projection is different. So projection height offset is a height of HDRI map projection. And let's say that changing radius and projection height value, I can set the dome light correctly. Remember that we can always rotate dome light. To do this, we can check use transform and rotate dome light in SketchUp, or we can click on the HDRI map, go to the texture placement and rotate it here in the rotate H option. And let's see that the dome light is rotated. Let's go to the previous asset and set it again. I place my building in the surrounding. Remember that we can use this finite DOM option also in the interior. Let's take a look. I stop rendering process and I go to the scene one. This is my interior and let's check the view outside the window. Again, I render interactively. 
this is my interior. Let's say that it's too dark. That's why I go to the dome lights and increase the intensity value to 100. The scene is brighter and it looks better. Maybe I will change the intensity to 120. It's brighter, 150 and it looks very good. Remember that we can still change the view outside the window, we can change the radius, we can change the projection height and play with the scene. I will set the dome light intensity to 120. If you want to brighten the view outside the window, you can do this easily. Just click on the texture slot, go to the color manipulation and change color offset and the view outside the window will be brighter. Okay, it looks great. Let's render the scene. I click on this triangle and choose render with V-Ray. This is our interior. Remember that you can always change the lighting in the scene by exposure layer. Just click on the layer icon, choose exposure, and you can brighten your scene by increasing exposure. You can decrease highlight burn to get rid of burnouts and I slightly increase contrast. And this is our scene using dome lights only. Let's move on and create something new. This time it will be emissive material. I go to SketchUp and I come a little bit closer. Let's see that here I have light sources and I can convert this lighting into emissive material. Remember that you can do the same using mesh light. This time I will create emissive material. I go to the asset editor and I create new material. It will be emissive material. Firstly, I will change the color. I will set a warmer color. I will set it to 5000 and I change intensity for example, to 20. And I apply this material to the models. I double click, double click, click three times or press Ctrl A to select all the faces and apply this material to the selection. I've created these lights as components. In other components, this material is also applied. I would like to have more control over my scene because I have dome light and emissive material. So to do this, I will turn on light mix render element. I click on the create asset, render element and select light mix. Then I change the light mix properties, this group by parameter from individual lights to group instances. So my light sources will be grouped so it will be easier to control them in the post-production. Let's render the scene. Let's say that the emissive material is visible. Using the light mix, we can control our lights even more. I click on the source light mix, it's on the right size. And let's say that I have few position here. Dome light, which I can turn on or off, and self-illumination. Self-illumination is emissive material. Let's see that I can increase intensity of this light and also change the color. This light was set to warmer color, but here I can again change the color of the emissive material. I will leave as it was before. That's why I right click on the swatch color icon and I set intensity to one. I can increase or decrease dome light intensity. It's time to create additional light. Let's say that my emissive material is not very intensive. We need to add something more. For example, IES light. I click on the IES icon, but before I do that, just type IES light in the Google search engine. And you can notice that there are many free files. For example, from this site, Leo Moon Studios. I saved one IS light in the folder. So I come a little closer. I click on the IS light. I select the light from the folder. I open it and place this light a little bit below the light source. It shouldn't be placed in the model because it will not work correctly. I need to place it a little bit 
below the light source and I copy it multiple times. I select IES light, move it to the right side, press left control and it's done. I will copy it again and I will copy these three lights to the left side. Let's see that in the asset editor, I have only one position here, IES light. If I right click on IES light position and choose select objects in scene, we can notice that all the IES lights are selected. You remember that I copied one IES light multiple times. That's why I have only one position here and this is IES light group. If I change intensity of this light, for example, to 10,000 and I change the color, I am affecting all IES lights in the scene. Let's see that I will create additional IES lights. To do this, I click on the IES light icon, select the file, I open and place it below the lamp. I go to the asset editor and let's see that a new position has appeared. And again, I can change intensity of this light to 5000. I go to the scene one and let's check the render. This is our render. Let's click on the source light mix and new position has appeared. Ah, yes, light. If I turn on or off this group of light, the changes are not very visible. Firstly, I will change the color of IES lights. Remember that you can change this color in the asset editor over here, or using light mix, you can do this in this place. I think that light changes in the light mix are much easier. I click on the color and I change the color of the lights. Okay, I can change intensity and we can see the difference. I can turn on or off these lights. The second IES light is this one placed under the lamp. Again, I will change the color of the light and I increase intensity. We can notice on the render that this light source under the lamp is visible. Let's create another light source. It will be sphere light placed in this lamp. To do this, I double click to select this element, right click, hide, and I will place the sphere light on this model. I click on the sphere light, click once, drag, click second time and place it on the lamp. I go to the edit tab and unhide all the models. I go to the asset editor. I will decrease the size of the sphere light. I think it's too large. For example, to five, I can move it down. Okay, it looks fine. I go to the scene one. I will change intensity, for example, to 50, but remember that you can change the color and intensity in the post-production. Let's check the scene. This is our render. Let's go to the source light mix. Let's see that the sphere light is over here. I can increase intensity. It's visible and I will change the color to the warmer one. Then I will create the last but not least source of light. It will be rectangle light, which will be placed in the suspended ceiling. I click on the rectangle tool and I place it here on the plane. I go to the asset editor. This is my rectangle light. I can increase horizontal dimension and move it to the left. Remember that you can always use scale tool to adjust this rectangle to the suspended ceiling. I don't want to see the rectangle light plane. So I go to the properties, options, and check this light as invisible. So a light plane will disappear. Let's render the scene. And this is our final visualization. I go to the source light mix, increase the intensity of the rectangle light. I can also change the color and it's done. Let's see that we have created visualization using natural and artificial lights. Remember that you can play with the lighting, for example, turn off dome light and increase artificial lights. And we have night scene. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe to the channel and leave a like. If you want to learn more about V-Ray for SketchUp, 
visit my website edag.org. See you soon. Bye.